Works. Apple. What are those now? Those are uh, Macintosh laptops. Yeah, called MacBooks. Uh, so, I believe what, they're both MacBook Pros. So what I know that, Bob's is. What does that Pierce's do that there. this doesn't do? Different operating system. It's uh, a laptop. So an iPad is constrained by, uh, well, one space, and two, uh, the, the applications. Everything that's on the App Store is all you can ever get. Uh, so laptops just per, are more feature rich uh, in terms of things that you can do. Uh, I don't, I don't know for sure, but at this point in time, uh, a tablet will never have the full functioning capabilities that a laptop or a desktop will have. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, but Windows is trying to close that gap. They've got that Surface Pro, which runs the full operating system, but you're still running into uh, storage space limits, mm -hmm. uh, which people try to solve with the cloud, but it's not doesn't always work. And, and the hardware, just because this is, this is literally everything, so uh, there's a lot more space to put larger components, and larger components usually means uh, better components. Uh, the smaller you make things, the less capable they are than their larger counterparts. An advantage of the iPad is it's more compact, easier to yep. take with you. Yeah, it's much more uh, travel friendly. Yeah. I mean, think of it in terms of if you own one person owns a Prius and another person owns a, a big heavy duty truck, mm -hmm. the Prius is not going to be able to tow a uh, fifth wheel, whereas a heavy duty truck can. Good <laughs> Thanks. I'm on the ball today, just not with my phone. <laughs> uh, and so the larger the capacity, the, the greater ability it has to do tougher things. Is there an icon that tells me if I'm on the cloud? Nope. How do I find out? It connected to iCloud or to the internet? It no, there's no. How there, do I know if I'm on? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, on my Mac, there's no. It doesn't like tell you that you're connected to iCloud. You just are. Uh, I mean, usually I know I am because that's how I sign in. Is it's my iCloud username and password is how I log into my Mac. Uh, versus Becca logging in, she logs in with her iCloud username and password. So, I don't know. Oh, I wonder if one viewer means I'm the viewer. <laughs> but this is the second week. Last week it, or last time it didn't work so well. But we're gonna try using uh, Google or YouTube Live. So in the past, for broadcasting this to the internet. I was using a different program, and lately it hasn't really been working well. So I'm going to try YouTube. Just recently found out YouTube has a live service. For what? Uh, for broadcasting my show, or our class, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So, well, yeah, it is, but no one knows about it. So only the people that I send the link to are really going to watch it. Uh, we've got some, I have no idea who, but it keeps popping up one viewer, and then it went down to zero, and now it's back up to one. But anyway, uh, John Me used to join us all the time. Uh, he's been traveling, so he wasn't, but John Me used to join us all the time on uh, online. But And a friend of mine, Rachel Line from San Diego, uh, used to join us online as well. Uh, and would it, yeah. So I go to, I go to iCloud, the icon that comes up to sign out. So, so that would mean you're signed in. Yep. Uh, so we're going to try that. And one of the things I just found out uh, this morning is something that I've been looking to do is I can screen share. So whatever uh, my computer is doing, I can now show. Um, 
on, well, of course you're gonna see whatever's on here, but now whatever this is showing that you're seeing here, people at home can see also, as opposed to having to either have me describe it or see it through the webcam on here, which is terrible. Are you can wired to the monitor? I, I yeah, am. Okay. Yeah, I've got my uh -huh. HDMI cable. So uh, Jerry Larson, uh, who is uh, someone who's been attending church for uh, a while now, maybe a couple months, maybe not even quite. Anyway, uh, he knows that I love technology, so he sent me this video, which I think is uh, hilarious. So I thought we'd watch it. It's wow! Well, it's always good. It one is of, one of my favorite actresses. Yes, and this. I mean, obviously, it's not real magic, because they're, you know. But anyway, this guy does this some crazy stuff with his iPad, and it's it's fun to watch. But you can, I think you can kind of tell how he does some things with it, and it looks like he's created his own apps to to kind of do what he does, because you, I mean, obviously, you can develop your own apps and. There's a way to tweak your iPad so that you can allow uh, your own apps to run on your iPad, uh, which is how hospitals and different uh, organizations are able to all download a internal application to run for their own purposes, as opposed to publishing it on the App Store. Uh, which is also how, if you've ever heard of iPads or iPhones getting viruses or hacked, that's how, because you have to disable certain safety protocols to allow that to happen. Uh, so that is how iPads are getting hacked or hijacked. I don't know if you've heard of the, we'll unlock your iPad for you for $50, because they've locked you out of it. It's because you've gone in there and messed with the settings to, innate, to allow uh, or to disable certain security features. So, I was blown away all the way from Germany. Please welcome the magician Simon Piero. I saw something that was on uh, Ellen Tube, I think, but I have not seen what you're doing today. I'm going to be surprised. Thanks for having me. Okay, thanks for being here. So you might be surprised about a couple of things that I found out with the iPad. I don't know if that ever happened to you, but if you go through like this, this might happen. So if it does, though, don't worry. It's uh, not a software problem or anything. This is just uh, more space for your own creativity. Okay. So, can you see the string? Yes. Here? Good. Right. Thank, thanks to the string, I stopped it. And I do have access to a whole new set of new apps. Oh. All a bit better than you. <laughs> so, thanks to the string, oh. I can actually show you my last 2,000 <laughs> pictures for my page. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't show you all of them, Alan. I'll just show you the overview. Because that way, I can easily print that. What? Just put it on a postcard and send it back all the way to Germany. Uh -huh. <laughs> but before I do so, I always make uh, a copy because <coughs> the data might get lost. <laughs> I know this app doesn't make any sense, but it's fun. And I think FaceTime is as well. So let me call a friend of mine. I hope it's ready. If you are too, that is you. <laughs> and I can stop. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Please do your best, I'm an Ellen. Okay, yes. like that. Yes? Okay. Perfect. So thanks to this straw here, I can easily <laughs> work well, thank you, yes. Ellen, thanks to this straw, I can share not only music, videos, but also code. <laughs> It's excellent, but I can also give something back. He doesn't know about that. Some coconut milk from California. One second, please. And here we go. Milk is coming. <laughs> okay, as you can see, it's still a prototype, but it worked. Let's give a hand to Christoph. Wow. Ellen, this iPad is also a very good hiding place, place to hide stuff. For example, for today, I have, let me find it, it's well secured over here. On the third page, I'm hiding for today an Ellen pad. So, here we go, because 
I gotta read that in a second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's blown away. And as Neil Patrick Harris just reminded us that you are the queen of selfies, I wanted to create an app just for you. And that's what I did. So what I do, what I do now, I go into the audience. I will come back in a second. Okay. <laughs> what a beautiful audience. pictures, one of the few pictures I made, and here it is. This is how the app looks like. This is how my grandmother's picture frame looks like. And now I need to count on a count of three. One, two, three. And there it is. And this is not another iPad. This is a real life. <laughs> Simon, if you have an amazing magic magazine you want me to see, please post it on Evelyn too. We'll be right back. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> you know, mine does all that. <laughs> For a novice, that would, would really be confusing. How do I get mine to do that? Yeah. Especially, you uh, treat yourself right off the <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> I thought that was crazy. It was kind of fun. When, when, how recent was that? I have no idea. Okay, because I was going to send it. I think it's actually pretty darn recent because uh, if you look at his iPad, um, it and the way you can tell is because he has a white iPad. If you look at the uh, the home button, you can see it's got a little uh, gold ring around it, which means it has the fingerprint scanner, which is just been released on the iPad for the newest one, uh, the Touch ID. So it was, it's got to be the newest iPad out there. Uh, uh, shoot, what did I uh, reopen, close tab, the amazing iPad magician, and then I would put the Ellen show. Uh, whoa. Not want you to play, so uh, so yeah, it was pretty great. It was fun to watch. Yes, yeah. There's that one guy that. Well, of course he's been around for a while, but the one guy that levitates. And have you seen that guy? He does all kind. Of, it's he's a street mu musician, magician, and he uh, goes out on the streets and he levitates in front of people just I mean just a few inches off the ground but yeah uh, so do we have any other questions Dropbox management yes they we have several devices you know two laptops and oh, okay so cell phones and everything and and everything is on everything you know, even yes. the, now the, the FLC worship, all yeah, on all our devices. And I have no intention of you know, using off my cell phone. Right. Uh, how do you? How do we manage? It? Yes, is the, is the question. In terms of not having everything on you know, every device, because eventually it just starts eating up memory and. And all kinds of stuff. So I looked at my data usage; it didn't seem to be affecting that. No, it That's the thing that cost me. Right. Data usage. Yeah. No. Yeah. The only time it would eat up data usage is if you actually were accessing it while using date, like using your cell phone mm -hmm. and using a data plan. If you're using it on Wi-Fi uh, uh, or Ethernet, it's not going to affect your data. But it'll affect your storage. It'll I mean, the more stuff. Storage. Yeah. 
if I deleted some out, I was gonna on one, I was gonna go check on another to see if it deleted it out. Does it delete from all if you delete? Yeah, if you're it's that that's account. the whole point. Yeah. So I mean one suggestion for uh, managing that kind of thing is to have one of you create a separate account. Okay. And then what and that's what Beck and I do. So here let's take a look real quick. Yeah, uh, on there, I have some that's 40 years old. Let me. Uh, Brian, can you yeah. just give a, a, maybe a general overview of Dropbox? I'm, I'm looking here. There must be a, a hundred camera uploads. Yes, that's because you've connected it to your phone. So if I delete these files, then will the photograph be deleted? Off your computer and off Dropbox, not off your actual phone's camera roll. So it won't be deleted here. It'll be deleted from the Dropbox app on your phone, but it will not be deleted from your phone's camera roll where the photos originally came from. So what what's in on my MacBook Pro will stay? Yeah, it'll only affect that folder on Dropbox. It won't affect anything else anywhere. Should I delete these? Uh, that's personal preference. Uh, the whole thing, the whole point of the camera upload is to uh, to create a backup of your photos um, because you know some people don't want to pay for the extra storage for iCloud, and so drop. I think that's part of the thinking that Dropbox did behind this. But photos take up a lot of space, so it's going to take up a lot of your Dropbox space also, and so. You're gonna have to subscribe to Dropbox's data plan and pay for them so you can store all those ones. So, uh, it, yeah, I just click. I finally forget. I'm using 78 percent of my my storage. Right. <coughs> so one option would be create a second account. And so uh, if you look here, yeah, separate email address. Um, and then, so if you look here, here's that FLC worship, which is what we're using now for uh, Sunday PowerPoints. And that has these little people on it. With uh, it's hard to see because I let me see if I can make the icons bigger. Extra look, well, maybe not extra large. <laughs> Let's just go with large. So it's got the little people right there. That and so is the Narnia music folder. Those are shared folders with someone else. So they still take up space, but with two separate accounts, then you're going to have not necessarily twice the amount of storage space, but you'll have more storage space. Uh, and then that way you can keep your own separate stuff on here. Uh, when I click on Pastor Brian's folders, or files, we'll go to large icons again. Uh, FLC Youth is a folder that Beck and I share since we both uh, do youth stuff. And so that's on her account because she has her own Dropbox account and it's on my Dropbox account because it's shared. And that way we're able to uh, share certain things, but I mean, Becca doesn't need uh, all of my council reports that I write. So we have separate accounts. There's plenty of stuff that it doesn't overlap, that doesn't make sense for us to overlap in having. So we just have two separate, just like we have two separate email accounts. Uh, Part of my concern was being we had the FLC account on our account, right. whether anybody that can access that can look at all the other stuff on nope. our drop no, it's only that folder that you choose to share with them. Yep. So Becca has no access to any of my Dropbox files except for this FLC Youth uh, file folder. I'm now into Dropbox and I'm looking at all these files. These files are being maintained in Dropbox out of my computer. Is that correct? No. It's both. It's not or, it's both. Um, they are physically on your computer, and so if you have no internet connection, it's you still can access and edit these files. Um, but it is also up in the cloud. So if you are not at your computer, but at say a family's computer, you could go to Dropbox's website, log into your account, download a certain file, and have access to it or view it. No, with the internet. Yeah. So is there any negative in leaving all of these up in the cloud since they're also on my computer? 
You just mentioned it. By well, they have to be in the cloud also. Um, oh, if you delete it from your computer, it's going to delete it from the cloud. Uh, and vice versa. If you delete it from the cloud, it's going to delete it from your computer. That's It's, it's maintaining so it's everything in sync so that wherever you go, it's always up to date, as long as you're connected so to the internet. So this is just a, a copy, a file in the cloud of everything that's in my computer. Mostly. It's not really a copy. Um, it is the file. Okay. Um, because being a copy, I could edit a copy and not edit the original. But once you edit this, it edits the copy. So of this is a duplicate of maybe the right term of what's on my computer. So if I edit it in the cloud, it changes what's on the computer and vice versa. Yes. Yep. So if I edit it on my iPad, uh, a couple seconds later after it's gone to the cloud and dumped it onto my PC, it's going to be edited on my PC to the so newest the version. The limitation is to how much I can have in the cloud. Yeah, it'll tell you if you click on the little icon here. Uh, You've got a different one there. I do because I'm on a PC. So yours should be in the upper right corner of your screen uh, if you have Dropbox installed on your Mac. That's where it appears on mine. And then I click on settings, and it what's says, it gonna, what's it gonna say? so you click on that icon, and it should pull up this little dialog box. And then you click the little gear, and mine says I'm using 58.9%. Of course, I also have almost 10 and a half gigs of Dropbox space. Mm -hmm. Mine is something Yeah. Mine was 3, 4 gigs. Yeah, there's ways to earn free space. Uh, two of those are, um, what is the, uh, I always forget the two. But the um, one of the ways to earn free space is if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can download the app called Carousel, spelled just like a, you know, like a carousel you would spell. And it's their photo collection app. Uh, I mean, sometimes people don't like the, the camera roll app on them. Just like some people don't like, I don't like the built-in weather app. I don't think it offers enough information. So you download an extra one. So Dropbox came out with Carousel. If you download Carousel on your phone or iPad and you link it to your Dropbox because it's made by Dropbox, they will give you three gigs of Dropbox space for free. Uh, and there was another one besides Carousel. There's something else, and I can't remember what it is. And that other one will give you another one gig of free data, permanent. Not only if you have Carousel installed, but just permanent for trying Carousel out. I store most of my, when I download my camera, my hard camera, yeah. it goes into my Picasso camera. And so I... Right. That's secure. That's on the computer physically. Mm -hmm. It's not the cloud. So right. Try if I delete all these pictures off. Uh, yeah, I. I mean, mine has the camera uploads, but I think there's only like 20 pictures in there because <laughs> I the, think the reason we put them on Dropbox. There's more. So <laughs> I could green and can pick them up or something. You know, we'll yeah. Dropbox yeah, I mean, putting individual photos or like a small set is fine, anything. but it's really. Unless you subscribe to their paid subscription, which is, I think it's a hundred bucks a year for a terabyte, which is actually pretty decent. Uh, using this as a way to back up your pictures just isn't reasonable with the amount of space pictures take up nowadays. So, so Dropbox. You guys use it for storage, essentially. Is that, or is there more fungibility? More for sharing. Well, sharing. yeah. There's. I mean, it's got the sharing feature. It's a. I mean, it's. See, like I, yeah, I take a picture at church, and I put it into Dropbox. Then Brian can pick it up, and then he can put it on the church website. How does he know it's there? Well, I have to let him know. So I, I forgot how I. Did. Well, or actually, what. If I'm sitting at my computer, or next time I pull up my computer, 
Dropbox pops up a little notification here in the bottom of your screen, says, you know, blah, 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 doc has been updated, or blah, 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 photo has been added. And you can click on it, and it'll take you right there. And let and you is know. that because you guys are somehow linked? Sharing a folder. You would share a specific oh, so you put folder. put in a shared folder. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Do yeah. we have a shared folder? Right. We do we, not. We probably, that'd be a But we could. Book. With Diane or anybody that takes pictures and yeah. church to, we probably should set that up. So that yeah, could, so yeah. It's just a little more elegant than email. I yes. can put it in Dropbox and then send you a link. I think I forgot. How There's also works. that instead yeah, of yeah. sharing, like if yeah, you don't I have Dropbox, I just put yeah, I put a link on an email and then you click on it, you can pull up that picture. Yeah, or the folder of pictures. Or, yeah. Or of the that, which is what we did uh, for some other things. Uh, yeah, so you can put a collection of things. You know, if I've got uh, a whole bunch of files for council next month, I could share, instead of emailing 10 documents, I could just share the Dropbox folder or share the link, and then they click on the link, and they can download those files. And, uh, and the nice thing about that is then it's kind of a one-time access and they're not permanently sharing, nor are they able to edit. Because if you share a folder, and say I've got a Word document, Bill, which he wouldn't, but he could go in, delete the entire contents of it, and click Save, and now I've got a blank document. Dropbox, oh look, yes. So Becca just edited the March youth newsletter. Uh, so, uh, but Dropbox also has backup, so you can go, you can't do it on your computer, but if you go to their website, which I've used, you can actually pull up old versions of stuff. So if Bill did accidentally or intentionally uh, delete or uh, edit one of my files that I didn't want edited, I could go to the website and pull up the one from two days ago, which I knew would was safe or unaltered. So I can click there, and there it takes me right to the, the edited newsletter. So Becca updated it. She said there, I was working on it, and she said there's a few tweaks that you should make, and she ended up just doing it. See where this can be. You know, one mentioned you know sharing pictures um, on Sundays when we get new members, FTAs or whatever. Yeah. First service can go on to that so that everybody who should know mm -hmm. would, could pick it up and update their records and that could be, yep. that'd be a useful tool. Yeah. So and it also acts as a external hard drive, basically. Only it, your hard drive is in the cloud stored on Dropbox's servers, not I don't have mine with me because Becca's been using it lately, but a little external hard physical hard drive. It's or carbonite, you guys use carbonite. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Same thing. But it's nice because it, it can be accessed from anywhere, even if you don't have your computer with you, because you can just log into their website. So the big difference about that, though, is if you do download a file from the website, you then do have to re-upload it. So it's a longer process if you're trying to make changes on using just the web version of it. Uh, it's not quite as fluid as just using it right on your laptop or desktop. So, so yeah, long, I mean, all of that was a great conversation, but to circle it back around, uh, if you want to kind of manage stuff better, uh, separate accounts is, yeah. can Whatever be I the best thing. It, I had you know, stuff that yeah. In there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I. Four years old, some of them. I mean, who knows? I know all these pictures are backed up elsewhere on my PC, yeah. so I could probably delete all of these and Definitely. save a lot of space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just haven't, because I have. Yeah, it takes time. It takes I went time. Through, you got to click yeah. each one, and then it takes time to delete out yeah. of the system. Yeah. Which is why it's I a lot quicker to delete on the yes. computer yeah. than I was on just the laptop. Say, on yep. my cell phone, yeah. Yep, on a cell phone or on an iPad. You're using data, too. If yeah. Deleting yep, yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. You don't need to go through and decide what picture you want to save on there or not. 
Can you quickly go through how you created those folders? These folders? It's literally no different than creating a, a folder on your computer for any other purpose. Okay. You just so I'm on Windows 8. I think when do you guys have Windows 7? 7. 7, 7. It I think this part works the same. So right here in the upper left hand corner mm -hmm. is oh, the new folder the icon. So you literally create that while you're in, in, in Dropbox. Dropbox okay. Which is why I love Dropbox more than uh, Box. There's a they used to be called box.net, but now they're just called box, which is another service similar to this. But I have always personally loved uh, Dropbox because it literally acts like any other folder on your computer. Yeah, and so you would and see it's it's got the little blue icon, meaning it's syncing, and it's not going to finish syncing because I haven't labeled it yet. But where, it, where, did, where was the button to create that? I, this, I, see my green bar up here? Oh, okay. This, uh, my iPad doesn't seem to be there. Uh, I'm in Dropbox and I went to Files. No, it's different on the iPad. Uh, there is a way to create new folders because I have, okay. but it's uh, it's a more not as intuitive okay. process. Uh, but as soon as I click Enter, uh, that new folder will then sync up and become a green check mark, meaning it's, uh, yeah, see, there it goes, green check mark. It's now synced to my Dropbox. Now I delete it. So. On my uh, MacBook, where do I find how much capacity I have and what I use? Um, Good question. Uh, you should be able to click on Finder. Okay. And then I think in Finder, it should, is it, lab I think it's default labeled Macintosh hard drive is what it's called, as one of your options to click on. No, this is empty trash preferences. Hide Finder. Hide Finder. Hide Finder. Hide Finder. Uh, <coughs> or actually, you know what? If you click on the little uh, Apple icon in the upper left hand corner, yep. uh, what are the options there? System preferences. Oh, no. I know those. Yeah. App Store, about this Mac. About this Mac, I think. You should click on that, and it should be able to tell you like basic overview of what your your computer looks like. Is that working, Bob? Well, it's giving me stats here. It's not telling me what uh, to do with storage, Bob. Yeah, it's one drop down. Yeah, it's hard drive. I like that. There you go. Okay. So you have 463 free out of a total of basically 500. So you're using less than 40 gigs of your 500. I'm using less less than 10 percent. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions or like all these things? You know, as we get better at it, I mean, they can be very useful. Yeah. As long as you manage it, otherwise it just gobbles up resources. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does. I mean, that's. I mean, think about phones. I don't know how closely you follow phones, but uh, the bigger. You know, like Apple and all the different manufacturers are creating phones that can do more, and the internal components are faster and stronger and better, etc. And uh, those are terrible terms to use, but anyway, <laughs> uh, to try to make the phone run better. But then the developers say, "Oh, got I've got all this power. 
you know, there. I mean, there's games that you can download for your phone that are like, or your iPad that are four gigs now. Whereas before, I mean, they used maybe like four megabytes, and yeah. now you've got some mm -hmm. games, games, or even apps. Like I've got so my. It slows it back down. Yeah, yeah, and it, so you know, there's this constant battle. I mean, the newest. That stuff. We got it now. <laughs> yeah, now you got to use that space. You know, and. Uh, it's just crazy. So uh, I have, uh, and I use it when I'm doing big traveling. I have uh, Magellan on my phone, and it takes up like 1.7 gigs on my phone, which is a, it, it's not as much anymore because I have a much larger capacity phone. But before that, 1.7 was a huge investment in the storage space of my phone. When I had a 16 gig iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, I mean that's almost one one eighth of everything: photos, pictures, other apps, everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I mean instead of just trying to keep things small, they say, "Oh, there's more space, there's more capacity, it can do more." Well, let's create yeah. our apps to be even bigger. So, yeah, anyway. Well. I think one of my mental problems with a computer is I stay in my comfort zone. Yeah. And I'm reluctant to move out of it and to try new. And, and if I did that, I'd, I'd answer a lot of my own questions. I think. Potentially, I mean, yeah. Honestly, I, I mean, I know I've shared with this with all of you before. Is I've, I mean, other than what I did in grade school. Uh, through our required uh, computer class, I've never taken formal classes on any of this stuff. Uh, it's just a matter of messing with and taking the time to do things. And I mean, honestly, Google is an amazing friend. Or I mean, Bing or whatever you want to use. You literally type in what is bothering you or frustrating you or. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes there are times still where I'll type something and like, you're not getting it. But for the most part, I mean, if you don't know how to, um, you know, I don't even know if that's the right term. But if you don't, if you want to learn how to gut a fish, is it flay a fish? Is that the right term? You can find a video on YouTube from probably five hundred thousand people that have uploaded a video on how to to fillet a fish. Uh, you know, to start from the mouth and go up to all the way to the back and pull out the middles and flap it, up, do whatever you want. You know, there's videos on how to do it. My Xbox wasn't working, and there's videos on how to fix those errors. You, it was out of warranty, so it didn't matter that I opened it up and voided the warranty, but there are videos, and I got it working for another six months before it finally fully died, but. That was six months more life out of it by spending a few bucks and some time on YouTube with like a dozen videos that I basically conglomerated all that information together and was able to fix my Xbox. So yeah, using you know Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever your or DuckDuckGo. You know we talked about DuckDuckGo keeps things private. Uh, any of that stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a great resource. So, um, you know, I had found that on the cloud all the photographs. Now I'm trying to go back to it. Yeah, you've been there. How did I get there? <laughs> How did I get there? <laughs> That's there is always that too. <laughs> the Sometimes cloud. there's a there's a history. If you, oh, I don't know if in in, I, in, a, in a Apple computer there's a history bar, so you look, yeah. click maybe two or three recent screens back, recent recently used, used type thing, and you yeah. go back to it, but try to get back to it. Yeah, and there's with uh, if you use Google Chrome, and I think I think actually all of them have it now. If you right click on this on your bar, you can reopen a closed tab. So you thought you were done with it, and then you went, oh, no, I, I need to open it again. 
instead of trying to search for that website again, if you if it's not a website that you use very often, you can right click and do reopen closed tab and it'll reopen that right exactly where you were before. So reopen closed tab. So now we're back at the amazing iPad magician, uh, which is what I did when you said, oh, what was the name of it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I already closed it, but yeah. was able to bring it back up by reopen closed tab. And I think Firefox does it, and I'm not sure about Internet Explorer, but I know those two do. And I'm not, I think Safari does as well. Firefox. Oh, reopen last closed window. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, the, yeah, there's always the history one. Where, you know, it always saves your history of where you've been the last forever. So, um, and I, I know this is going to take a long time and this is going to be very confusing, but Mark had asked about uh, websites, like personal websites, whether it's a, a blog or uh, any kind of, you know, information website or... Uh, what have you? I, when I first started my fish tanks, I kept a blog about the process of getting them ready and adding fish and the corals that I was acquiring, and so my friends and family could see how it was progressing. And I haven't updated that in a couple years, which is probably a good thing because my fish tanks are in disrepair at the moment. But uh, but for a while, I was keeping those. Uh, up to date and so there's different websites you can use and some of them are you know if you're looking for that kind of thing creating a website's really simple uh, simple relative terms <laughs> and the three sites that I have suggested use I think you sh I would suggest you looking into uh, number just a second number one would be uh, uh, Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com, Weebly dot com. Uh, and here's kind of, I'm logged into mine, and it's a free account, which you can only do, obviously, certain stuff with a free account. But there's a lot you can do with a free Weebly account. And um, literally, it just involves one of the great things about this is it's uh, there's they don't really use this term anymore because it's so commonplace. But it's a what you see is what you get, uh, uh, and they've a pretty WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. But literally, if I want to add a this a text box somewhere, I just drag it, and now I've got a text box. Um, and then I click on there, and I just start typing in bold, italicize, underline, etc. If I want to add an image, add an image under there, and then I would click to add a photo from my computer or from uh, somewhere online. Uh, so it's really quite simple. And then you can create different uh, tabs. So the about page, con if you want a contact form, you can create a contact page. Uh, and these are all the different things that you can add. Social media icons. So up here is Facebook. I haven't entered them, but if I wanted, if people wanted to reach, if I wanted people to reach me on Facebook, I'd enter my Facebook page here, and then they just click on the icon and it'd take them to my Facebook page. Or if I created a page for whatever, then so, it would take them to that Facebook. So that's your page. Yeah, it's not published, and obviously you can see there's literally nothing so if you on you want to change my site, that you can do that. Yeah. You can call it Brian's site. Yep, and, and literally. And then the link to it is what? Uh, Weebly.com slash you or something? It, it's something.weebly.com. So, um, so if you want to share stillwaterfarm.weebly. Yes, dot weebly dot com. And, and then if you, you do that when you create your account. yes before yeah, and you can create multiple sites, and so each one would have a different uh, one. So uh, how are his friends and enemies going to know about this site? You, just like anything, he has to yeah, share it. Know. You yeah. could, I mean, if you wanted it to be truly public. There's ways that you can uh, submit your site to Google or to Yahoo or to Bing, 
and then if people searched for uh, you know Christmas tree farms or something uh, based on what Mark submitted as his uh, stuff for Google it would pop up but of course those who have paid to be at the top will always be at the top of the Google search uh, and he would be much, I mean he might be page two or page 10,000 depending on so we could do this with say faith walkers yes and, and you know do it and then just send it out to the faith walkers email list yep yeah and there's uh um, link to it on the church website yeah, yeah you can make a website. link to it on yeah. the church website uh there's um yeah that's always it's always a thing uh so and weebly weebly is more um i mean it it's a it's a great site and it's really great in its visual nature and this background this kind of wood shelf kind of thing is a template and so you can go in and pick whatever template you i don't know I mean, uh, maybe it's design. Okay. Yeah. So, other than the recreation, who would be using this? Um, well, there's paid versions of it. So, if you upgrade it to, I think the next option was four dollars a month. You actually can get your own domain name, along with other features too. But for four dollars a month, you get bonus features plus your own domain name, which means you could call it Stillwaterfarms.com, and the Weebly part disappears. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and here's the different templates um, that they have, and so you pick which template most uh, you think would best reflect, and obviously you can, the whole point of going uh, to this page is you can edit it. So it's still got the same basic layout, but you can move the pic this picture over this side and things different places. So it truly becomes your website. And the cool thing is, so this is the desktop view. And then if you click over here, now you can see what it'll look like on a, a cell phone or a tablet. Um, if people want it, if people are accessing or you want it to have that mobile friendly is what they call it, uh, view. Does it have a site map button? Uh, great question. You mean be able to see yeah, what all the, the different and subfolders. All the different pages? Yeah. Here you go. So here's home, about, contact, and so then you can do a page layout. So this would list all of your different pages here on the, and you can add right here, do a quick add. Um, and yeah, you can add a store page to this. So if you're selling stuff, like if you're, you know, doing homemade beauty products or something, then you can add a store page to it. Uh, settings, uh, so, and then under settings, you can change the name of the, and it'll let you know right away. As soon as you type in the name of your website, uh, it, it won't let you create one with that name if something else already exists with that name. So I tried to, I think when I was on this other one, I tried to type test page and testpage.wordpress.com was already taken, so I couldn't do that. Uh, so that's what you do. And, um, and then another one is wordpress.com. And right now I'm in the uh, create, so site address and uh, So I type in, this is a test page. Sorry, this site already exists. <laughs> so I cannot do this as a test page, .wordpress.com. Uh, but WordPress is another one. Uh, lots of people use WordPress. Uh, WordPress and Blogger. So there's blogger.com, which is related to Google. Uh, so if you have a Google account, you already technically have a Blogger account. Uh, these are more, they don't have to be but they are designed more like blogs, <laughs> which um, is kind of like an online journal. So can you receive feedback then as a blog? Yeah, there's a, there, <coughs> there's a lot of blogs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for 
my the first year I was here for a year, I did this devotional called the Doorposts Online Devotional uh, for people in the congregation. And uh, so we can go to posts. I don't think anyone ever commented, but <laughs> but they were available for comments. And so uh, so you click on so we'll click on God. Oh, I want to go to the actual. Um, well, I'll click on preview. Maybe it'll take me there. So you click on preview, but people will go to the actual post. Maybe. You yeah, you can do a travel blog. Let's see. I don't even, I don't even remember what the. Can I go to the. Um, yeah, there's some other travel blog. Kind of there we go, view blog. There. So here's the blog. Um, so calendar, I don't remember what the calendar was, but anyway. Um, so down here at the bottom, you could, of course, it looks different because it's my blog, so I've got other features that it lets me see. But you could click on comments, and right there, just add a comment. And I have it had this one set up so that uh, it would email me when a comment was made and I could preview it before I let it go because any number of people can post and robots could log on and post spam, you know, visit this website for blah, 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 just like you get spam emails all the time. So I thought it'd be good to have that filter for it to go to me first before it published to the website. Uh, so... And then these are labels. So uh, for labels, you know, you could uh, down here at the bottom, uh, Second Kings, Attitude, Elijah, you can do, they're also called tags. Uh, so if you were doing a specific walk, you could name the walk down on the tag. And if you did that walk several times, then people could click on the, the tag or the label and see all the different times uh, that you've been on that do walk. these other weekly and WordPress have... WordPress does. Weebly, I'm not entirely sure about. Weebly is designed more to be uh, website oriented, like you're presenting information or uh, so something you, of that nature. If you put up a, a research paper or something, had uh, chapters and footnotes and whatnot, it would just be a file on there. They would just see the, the title, or could they actually get into the document? Is it a linkage thing? or the There's different ways that you could do it. You could create it so that it's like a downloadable file, like a PDF file or something, and then it would probably just, it would have the title of the document plus usually it lists the how big the file is. Or if you wanted to actually put it in, then you would have to copy and paste and you, as, uh, as a document. Uh, so it would so actually just be readable. Management plan. Yeah. Somebody could click on it and it would open like a... Just like a web document. page. Yeah. yeah, so if you clicked on about, that would be management plan, and then it would just be a whole page of just text, uh -huh. just like a, a an essay. So, uh, so yeah, I mean this. I mean you can automatically insert a slideshow. So like with the Faith Walkers, you can put in the pictures. Yeah, we put one together for last year, so it's yeah. easy to just download that. And yep. Put so it on the Dropbox. Yep. Put it in there. You could yeah. insert a map. Yeah. Okay, that would be good for you know driving instructions, maps. Yep. You know, so that if somebody else wanted to follow up and do the hike on their own, they could do it. Yep. Uh, you you can have YouTube directly embedded in here so if you did videos you could do a YouTube here's the file one mark you could so there's a file box there um, click here to upload files so then you just upload the file so Weebly may be the best one for that kind of an application it's WordPress it like blogger is easy. old I have no idea when the last time they Google has updated Google does a lot of stuff, and then if it doesn't succeed, they don't really ever get rid of it. Yeah. They just let it continue to exist. Um, so um, WordPress, uh, I don't even know what to, 
Uh, available? It's thinking about it. It is. All right, there we go. Uh, a few more details. Okay. Works. All right. Let's see if we can where we can get. Oh no, I don't want. Well, there we go. No thanks. <laughs> so it's going to give me techforgod.wordpress.com is what it's going to do. And then here we go. Here's the theme section. Uh, we're just going to go with this one. I can. You can always change the theme light later. So if you think, oh, well, that one looks really nice. And then you start playing with it and go, that's not really the feel that I want for the, the website. Uh, we want free. Select free. Thank you. Then you can go back and change the theme. And obviously, things will get shifted and moved around initially. Uh, uh, so, and then click on customize. And it seems like a really bland theme, but <laughs> don't really see anything. Uh, so, and here, yeah, blogging. So it's more blogging style than uh, where you create a post. Of, words and yeah. Yeah, so here's taglines and logos, colors and backgrounds. I don't, maybe, oh, maybe I didn't get the design because that's a premium feature. So, so you have to use whatever they want to give you. Yeah, free. the free stuff. So how does Weebly make money? By selling its premium services. Yeah, and you'll have, uh, I mean, by putting their name Weebly.com, because you have it free, people will know that you're using them. And there, there's typically uh, advertisements that you don't see here, but when you actually click publish and people visit your website, they it'll either have advertisements that, peop that uh, like Nike, pays Weebly to have theirs. And so it's it'll just be a scrolling mm -hmm. set of advertisements. You, you've probably seen that on other websites where there's yeah, so kind of rule. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll be permanently at the top of your website and it just scrolls through. Oh, yeah. uh, and then when you scroll down they disappear. But every time you go to the top of the page or the bottom of the page or the side of the page or something, there will be advertisements. And when they click on them, it generates money for Weebly and that way they can offer this for free. And I mean, website domains for the most part are so cheap nowadays. I mean, we pay $10 a year for the churches for our domain name. They're extremely inexpensive. They can get extremely expensive though. If you get something that's desirable, um, I was listening to one of my podcasts, and this guy created a website. He or he registered the domain name for his daughter, and now his daughter's name is also some famous up-and-coming child actress, and they're trying to buy the domain name from him. And he said they're offering thousands of dollars yeah. for it. So I bet you there are people that just start registering. Oh yeah! They do. Oh yeah! They do. Oh yeah! You click on some sites or some search, and you get a whole list of "Would you like to buy this site?" Yeah, and you think you're getting to some place, but you're not. You're just getting to this, you know, this farm. Yeah. Like so Obama, Obama for president. Yeah. yeah. For five years ago. Yeah. But the uh, one of the things, though, that you have to be careful. I mean, that people have to be careful with. I, I'm assuming none of you are going to go and start buying domain names, but you can't. I mean. Uh, Companies do sue when you intentionally yeah. register a domain name knowing that someone is going to want to buy it. Yeah. Like a company name or something. Yeah. 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 So. Well, but if you could just forecast some of these up and coming starting companies. Yes. Like Twitter. Yes. yes. So, I mean, it, 
or if you just you know some name is going to be popular because there was uh, uh, I forget it, but different countries get their own abbreviations, and uh, I forget what the there was one country that was given a certain you know instead of dot com you know or dot gov they were given a specific one. Oh, it was dot me. I forget who got dot me, but I mean, everyone wanted a dot me, you know, uh, so, and someone, some guy, I don't, random guy was able to register first. I don't know how he did it, but will you marry dot me? And it was so that he could propose to his wife, but obviously he wouldn't need that forever. He got bank for that website. You got what? Bank, lots of money oh, okay. for the will you marry dot me website. Mm -hmm. uh, so and that was just you know he wanted it for his for, yeah. for his fiance and then ended up of course people are going to want to want that website. Uh, so this is just an introduction. Uh, if you guys are interested in that kind of uh, things, I suggest maybe this next week create an account with whichever one you prefer. And then over the next couple of weeks, we'll just continue to look at, at them and try to build and develop them together. Uh, and I'm not going to guarantee to be on top of it. Is there any size issue with this? There's probably a bandwidth limit, but I don't anticipate the websites that we designed to get immense traffic. Uh, there is, and it, let's see, upgrade. No, oh, no. Maybe be out next week. I think so. Okay. Um, so here you go. So drag and drop, free hosting, unlimited. So you have unlimited amount of pages. Uh, if you did have your own personal domain name, you got somewhere else, so even with a free account. Oh wait, no, starter. Never mind. Uh, they're not showing you the free one. But when you first create it, it tells you everything that you're you get with it, yeah. and everything I'll, you I'll don't get. I, I'll wash that up. Go ahead. I, I do the dishes. It's my job. <laughs> Leave it there. Uh, interesting. So it'll uh, tell you, and it'll tell you, you know, file size. It will tell you file size limits. Like obviously, they don't want you uploading a. a Four gig movie to your website, uh, primarily because you're probably pirating or posting something illegal. Can you put a webcam on that? Like, um, I don't know. Yeah, Good your question. Your damn webcam yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, of course. Good question. Google AdSense. If you want to generate revenue, if you want to put, if you want to put ads on there, then mm -hmm. uh, and but it's only if people click through. Uh, so it's not like you just make money because you're audio has audio audio HD video. I don't know what HD video. I don't know if that means it's like a webcam. Pro. Oh, pro. Well, there you go. Probably yeah. Those are kind of things that be a. Uh, I try it. Out. I really don't want to try it out. Okay. Uh, but that's a video. That'd be a video, not yeah. a webcam. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I mean, you can always search and see what. But also, if you want to, if you let me know which one you decide to go with, I might play with it more in that well, way. I can. Okay. Then I'll, that was actually the one. Uh, and it seems to be intuitive as far as adding the pictures and. and uh, all right.